Howdy folks, Elk Rex here. Just doing a uh, kind of a public service uh, video. Had some individuals that were asking, what do you do to start a mercenary campaign for Battletech? And, well, the first thing is you have to decide what era that you want to play in. And most likely, as like we like to do, we start in around the 3025 era, which would be in this book, or you can do the 3039 book era. So one of these two. Uh, either or, most of the mechs that you find in this book are also in this book, this one right here. So, so basically what you have to do is look at what do you want to do with your group, what are your intentions are, uh, most of the time when we play, it's just to have fun, and we, instead of just playing pickup games, oh, we're going to play this many points, we like to play games where you have some type of intention going on, where if there's two or three or four of you in a group where one person plays the uh, uh, mercenary captain, one plays the opposition, op four, uh, commander, and then you'll have, like if you have a third person, one will be the guy that draws up the contracts, uh, does the game mastering, uh, help you get the locations, sets up the games, uh, what the opposing force may be, when they may show up. Uh, usually that's how it makes it easier if you have a third person involved. Two people can do it. That's not a problem either. I've done many times playing with two. But it seems to work best with three. And the whole, like I said, just with the three different aspects you have, uh, it works a lot more streamlined. Now let's just look at, all right, so we've seen that we've been going through this book here. There's a, the reason I've been going through this for the last... Uh, six months or so out of this book. Eventually I'm going to go through and start into this one and start talking about some of the units that you can't find in this book, okay? So what are you going to need? You're going to need some books. Now back in the day when we first started playing we had this book. This came out in like 87 I think it was, somewhere around there. And this is one of the first things we started doing was using this book and we started setting up our campaigns as a mercenary either being hired out by a house uh, some type of uh, usually it, it falls under s several categories which are all related to house um, politics so let's say your house Davian and you see something across the border that House Karita is doing and you don't like, but you don't want to get your hands dirty. So what do you do? You hire somebody to do the dirty work for you. And those are mercenaries because, well, geez, you have culpable deniability. There you go. So if you get caught, well, we don't know you. <laughs> you took your money and ran. So that's tough luck. Tough love. So, you're going to need a book. Now, back in the day, this was the very first one that came out, which was the Mercenary's Handbook. came out about 87. And I think it cost, I'll just go through it. And here is one of the last uh, units I used out of it, the, the first Larian Black Panthers. This was the force structure that we had in that unit. We, it was more of a uh, book cost $12 back in the day. <laughs> so pretty cheap. So it had an HQ, we had uh, Command Recon, command, command Platoon Infantry, Fire Support Command. So we had basically the company and then we had uh, the different um, units that were broke up into Alpha Troop, Bravo Company, etc. And uh, Charlie. So we had the three different um, companies or troops, depending on uh, what they were. Most of these, these were all the Alpha and Bravo were mechs. So was Charlie by this time. And that was just the first battalion was nothing but mech. Second battalion was armor, and the third one was infantry, mechanized infantry. So. Basically, we had 
a regiment's worth of uh, combined arms. That included vehicles, which were helicopters, tanks, APCs, you name it. Everything that you find in this book and this book and uh, the 3026 uh, book. I don't have it handy at the second, but all right, so you had that. And then, well, here's one of the old mercenary contracts that was found in this book. It was a contract between Comstar. Yeah, Comstar, they even get their hands dirty because they're always trying to destabilize certain elements of what's going on because, you know, they like doing their thing too. So this was a contract between the Black Panthers and the Mont uh, who was at the um, Montre Black Horse Cav, which was another member of our group. And this came, I think, during this time we had like four or five guys that were actually maybe six. I think it was six individuals that were playing, and so we had to make sure that people had time to play with their units. We're doing combined uh, contracts together. And then with the contract agreement, we basically laid out everything. We signed a contract. Yes, there was even binding contracts and how much you'd get and everything. And let's see. Yep, came out in 87. So basically, this book here was the very first time we had it. It gave you base costs and units salvaging what it takes to start your game i think in this one if i look, remember right there's a pretty cool picture which if i could find it if it's in here maybe it's in the other mercenary book i think it's in the other one these are pretty old so basically, you, you just went through here, and it told you how to set things up step by step. Yeah, I think it's in the other book, which I'll find here in a little bit. Anyway, and when you're laying everything out, you want to, because you're going to have, when you start off, we usually started off with the, uh, like, I started my whole series, the thoughts from the inner sphere was the uh um you're immersed you're not you're really a Solaris uh um uh, mech jock. So you go out and that's how we usually start ours. And you made enough sea bills uh through competitions in the in the arena where you're able to start you salvage some mechs, so you end up having enough mechs to start your own lance free of charge. And you had enough sea bills for stocking up for equipment. And then you're looking for a contract. And basically, these books will help you learn how to set up and do a contract. Now, this is the Mercenary Handbook of 3055. I think this came out in 94. 92, 94, maybe 93. Uh, 93. This came out in 93. Cost $18 back in the day. And this is more of the wonderful uh, Fossa books. Maybe it's in this one. I gotta find that picture I was telling you about. There's a Rakshasa and a, uh, looks like a. Oh, uh, not it's not a Highlander. This is a Gunslinger. I think it was. Uh, what it is is there. It is. Who's not? If you haven't seen that picture, there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when your machine gun ammo gets hit. Yeah, bad. Which is why we made our house rule for ex take the machine gun ammo, divide it by uh, 20 and round down. Yep, then you don't have that problem. It's ridiculous. Machine gun ammo exploding and blowing a mech completely to pieces. We've actually had that. That's why we made our house rule. Anyway, basically this is 
kind of like taking what's in this book and expanding on it for after the clans hit in 3050. And so now you're dealing with clan tech and clan rules, salvaging clan mechs, uh, and increased, uh, oh, there we go, there's good old Solaris. Ooh. Wolf trap and a crab going at it. Now, so like I said, you start off, figure out what you're going to do, how much you're going to have. Typically, uh, when we're doing this, we start off with like 20 million, 30 million, somewhere in there. We usually did like take a D10 plus, you know, roll it, and that equals how many millions plus 20. So it was like 21 through 30 million C bills, and that's how you start off for your operating costs to purchase like a drop ship for you being used to transport from one system to another. And I think most time we just bought like a leopard, something easy so you can get in and get out. And then as the uh, game goes on you're either going to be picking up more tanks uh more mechs everybody usually likes to wrap their attention around um with mechs but there's nothing wrong with a good old-fashioned tank that's easy to buy cheap has a lot of firepower and can do the job that you just not necessarily want to risk one of your mechs on all right so you can send a lance of tanks out to do the job that a mech could do or two. But, you know, you can do it cheaper sometimes. Now, I don't think there's anything else other than what's in there that tells you setting up your contracts, expense. You know, this here in this one they had to table how much it costs per, you know, you see how expensive mechs are. You're talking three up to heck clan mechs were seven million c bills and just look at how much a warhammer would run you six seven thousand seven million six or seven million for just a uh single mech vehicles we always liked using bulldogs rommels Etc. Like a bulldog, sixty tonner, one one million C bills. You can buy six tanks for the cost of one mech. Gives you kind of an idea why you're going to have a combined arms. And combined arms is very good, especially if you want to go and have um, helicopters and other things, APCs. Is you know. A mech can take something, but you're going to need something to hold the uh, uh, area. And you also need to look at getting construction mechs, because if you're going to set up a long-term operations base, you know you might want to have a construction mech in case you don't have access to barracks. So you might have to have building materials, you know, you name it. You start looking into all those things. There's a lot of things you can do. You just think about it in terms of if you're like going into Iraq or Afghanistan today and you've never been there and you're going to have to set up a forward operating base, you're going to have to have a rear operation base and that type of stuff where your rear base will have where you're going to store your beans and bullets and all that stuff and your forward operating base is where you're going to send your sortie your missions out of but you're going to have to have supplies. How are you going to get those supplies there? Are they using trucks? Are they going to be flown in? Are you going to be doing convoys back and forth, being watched by vehicles? Or are they going to be watched by tanks? You know, what kind of security are you going to have? Uh, you can't have four mech pilots doing security for you all the time because you, uh, you're going to get tired. They can't pull security 24-7. You're going to have to have some downtime while they sleep. And who's going to do that for you? You're probably going to have a platoon or a couple squads in there early in the game of infantry that will rotate pulling local security. You're going to have to have um, techs to fix your stuff. You're going to have to have supply individuals that need to keep track of all your supplies that in case something breaks down, you name it. 
there's a lot of things that go into playing a campaign. And if you're like that kind of stuff, which we did, we got into it and feeling figuring out your monthly expenditures for wages, all right? These guys just don't do it for free. You know, you got to pay these people. Uh, then when you're doing contracts, you know, one of the biggest things that can be argued over is salvage. Salvage is your bread and butter as a mercenary. Because if you can salvage a mech off the battlefield, let's say you hit a hunchback with a headshot, killed the pilot, but you have a 95% intact, except for maybe some of the cockpits destroyed, of a mech. And if you have a salvage contract where you get one mech of your choice off the battlefield, well, geez, I might pick that hunchback because the expenditure to fix it up is minor compared to, let's say, oh, there's a warhammer that got hit and ripped all the armor off, lost both arms, a leg, um, then you cord the engine but it didn't blow or something, or you just took out its two gyro, the gyro and it went down and the pilot's popped out hey are you willing to fix that up and have and spend you know five six million C bills to fix something up or you want to fix something it might cost you 250,000 C bills to put a new cockpit or repair it I'd go with the uh, the hunchback just for the sheer fact that the cost expenditure and profit margin is greater so the more profit you have in the long run it means more that you can operate down the road because the moment you run out of uh, money and you can't pay your guys what do they do they're gonna take their mechs and go or they're gonna if they don't have if the equipment's all yours you may have to sell some of your equipment to make uh, payroll or you may do this wonderful thing called piracy yeah there's that too in the game but if you get caught yeah bad now, here's one of the uh, the latest book that's out from Catalyst Games. This is the uh, Campaign Operations book. And uh, this is a pretty handy book. Pretty much covers a lot of what's in these books here, but in more detail. You know, it's like they looked at those books and kind of expanded upon them. In a way, this book, some parts of it, I look at it is more geared towards role-playing. Which, in some ways, what you're doing when you're running a campaign is like role-playing. And I don't have a problem with that if you are big into role-playing. But if you never role-played, you know, I can understand you, like, kind of shying away from some of the stuff. Now let's just put this, see if we can put it like that. Give you an idea what's in here. And all the books have the same page here. you got a mad cat. All right, so as you go through, I'm just going to pan through some of this real quick. Uh, you select your force, uh, background. Like, as I always said, my guys always start from Solaris. That's another thing is you got to pick a world that you uh, want to have your base operations out of. And when we did ours, we always started off on Solaris. And the reason for it is you have your home. Basically, you got the home office. And at the home office, you probably have some type of le secretary legal and some uh, chief operations officer and financial officer. Basically, three to four individuals whose job is to take care of, of making sure that supplies get to where they need to be. Uh, make sure the contracts are there. Because you may be over on this world over here doing a long-term contract and then it's, when the contract, let's say, ends in May 1st or April 30th or something like that. And on May 1st, you were out of the contract because operations will cease. You may have ceased your operations and fulfilled your contract by March uh, 27th, but you still have a month left in your contract. So they're paying you to be at that place. They may let you go with... Uh, Funds dished out, say, yep, your contract's done, here's your wages, goodbye. Or they may keep you on site as sec local security until you're the day of your contract. That's up to the game master and how you decide that. 
But back at the home office over here, let's say you're on Solaris, they round up and look at all the contracts. They look at the contract board at the uh, mercenary office because there's always somebody looking for some type of force someplace along the whole inner sphere for doing a contract. There's always some type of operation needed to be done that be recon, it may be uh, insurrection, uh, putting down an insurrection, causing an insurrection, a raid, uh, knocking out a factory, uh, stealing something. Uh, we've done a few over the years where, let's say, some factory has some type of tech that they're developing and they send you in. They have their own covert operatives that are going to go get the tech, but you're supplying local security. Right, to get them in and get them out and protect them until they're up in space and then you get paid handsomely if they you succeed and hopefully if you have time you can collect up stuff. That also brings up is uh, how are you uh, going to get something off planet? You might need uh, heavy duty uh, transport trucks uh, that will be able to haul a mech you know that kind of stuff. So there's just more than just buying mechs too. So you have your base operations let's say you're on solaris and uh force creation table you look at what the year it is you roll randomly do 3d6 in this table and it'll tell you how much you start usually like i said we start down here and just give you 20 to 30 million c bills that's how we always like to do it you you take your four mechs that you're going to have and then you're going to get 20 to 30 million C bills after but the mechs we always started with none of them can be uh, heavier than 55 tons so you're kind of stuck at the light and medium mechs we'd never liked anybody starting off with a pig on the battlefield usually unless they take some of their money that they have they can purchase something in addition if they want to but that's up to them so you that's usually what we went with. And then you look at the era here, when it is, and there's multipliers by what house, if it's a house or a minor house type of thing, how much it would uh, modify, or let's say um, you're starting off in like House Steiner, you're descended from a house diner, so if you have 25 million C bills, and then multiply that by 1.2, and that will tell you how many extra C bills you're con you're going to start off with. And usually we kind of ignore some of this stuff over the last couple of years since this has come out. Uh, and what's available, you roll to see what will pop up if you're able to get extra stuff. And like I said, we're on Solaris. You're gonna on uh, Gaming World. There's always extra mechs on hand. They're available for purchase. Uh, spacecraft. What kind of drop ship you can get? And there's a chart in some place in the back here where it tells you how much things cost you. And another thing you're gonna do is you're gonna. There's all the way in the back of this one. There is, like, here's all the different charts telling you how everything works. But there's also a war chest campaign record sheet. There's your planetary details record sheet. So you basically create your planet on here with details. And you move from hex to hex to hex. Maybe uh, transported from like this hex over to this hex via your drop ship or you may be uh, boots on the ground traveling one position to another star system overload over ah, overview tells you how what's in the system and then you have your uh, force creation worksheet so you basically what's going to be in it how much it's going to cost you and everything and um like here's the salary so you add everything up in the beginning this will be small in the beginning and then as you grow you keep adding line items to this because there's been times when you had uh pretty decent um salvage rights where salvage rights fall into two different categories usually you can get the material themselves 
so you can take the materials home or it may be the um, your contract owner will be all right we'll figure out what the cost of everything and we'll give you a percentage in C bills so you have money so if you went back to let's say Solaris or Outreach or wherever it may be whatever um, contract world that you're coming from you may take the, that money and purchase new equipment all right from the company house basically because <clears throat> that's one thing houses like to do is if you are operating out of let's say house davian's area and they like to have the exclusive contract to supply you all the goods so you're going to be looking at um expenditures and they'll sell you everything at a certain price and if you have to borrow stuff then you might find yourself having to either sell stuff or you're working free for a contract or two and that just starts compounding because if you can't pay and then they end up owning you and then next thing you know you're working for a house for free and then they just it's like oh since you can't pay we'll just wrap you into the uh, defense forces so you gotta watch your expenditures and then after you get everything like I said there's you select your personnel tech personnel support personnel officers administrative personnel and here you showing building your uh, build sheet out and determining the operation expenses how much everything's gonna cost you uh, you can make some good money in bank if you keep rolling into new equipment more better equipment larger equipment eventually like you seen in the my one sheet I had were running around with uh, we I think I had like 40 I think it was 40 actually total about 48 mechs after about 30 years of operation we had around 40 50 mechs and then you know equal number uh, or double that was vehicles and infantry and stuff <clears throat> and uh, calculating uh, peacetime operating costs because you may not you may go six months without a contract so you have to figure out how much it's going to cost you per month and then you have at least have that much funds on hand to always you know I always found it good to have at least two years by the time you start two years of operating cost available and if you that way you're not living shoestring to shoestring and I always like to try to get into my contracts where they pay you to do the job and then a small a certain percentage let's like say 25 percent of my repair costs and if I can get more than that even better because usually the repair costs come out of your own pocket but if you can have the house let's say you're you got a contract with house uh, Steiner they typically we always played it where house Steiner is more willing to give you a little bit more because they in helping you repair your equipment and that's helped in the long run because there is what if you got a good mercenary uh, company you want to keep them around on hand on right, here we're talking about taking on debt that could be putting you into the house uh, there's reputation how to build reputation how to screw up your reputation you go in and uh, hit a civilian uh, city center and start killing civilians willy-nilly your reputation goes to crap real fast uh, combat record rating so if you do really good if you do this mission this mission this mission you start getting a reputation as a group of guys and gals that go out there and do the job get the job done and next thing you know you're getting better contracts better terms on your contracts then people are coming to you for contracts because this group gets the job done all right transportation rating so if you have your own equipment that uh, goes into helping out with your reputation finance if you're uh, running in the black all the time and you have a good credit rating where let's say you have five years ten years operating costs uh, so you could probably 
Um, yep. So you take your financial rating. So if you have a couple years worth of operating costs and you're running into black all the time. So that really helps out your uh, ability to get contracts down the road. So as you can see, it, it, it starts adding up into more of a role playing for setting up your contract. So basically you're doing role playing and if you like role playing, then this is the aspect of it that you're gonna really enjoy. And if you really like Battletech, well, you're, you're gonna find yourself uh, rolling some dice as you're doing the battles. Now it also shows uh, crimes. Like I said, if you uh, start to say you're doing a mission and you come across the bank that's full of bullion, you know, and you're doing the Kelly's Heroes thing, it's like, well, we're gonna sidetrack over here and load up the lorry full of uh, gold and move over here and squirrel away and make a couple hundred million extra C bills off the side. Hey. That can happen. You know, the, the temptation may be out there. And it may be the mission actually is you go and knock off a bank for and destabilize a planetary uh, area by knocking off their financial center. Okay, and then I say we got hiring and campaigns. I think maybe this will end this uh, video off right here. Since it's getting pretty long, I think we've gone on at least 30 something minutes. Uh, my, yep, it's getting close there. So, uh, what we'll do in the next uh, set of videos is we'll just discuss some of like who you can hire, campaigns, and in the meantime, if you don't have this book and you read this, you know, if it gets you intrigued at in how to do stuff, go out and pick up this book right here, which is the uh, Campaign Operations. From Catalyst Games to so go, go out and pick it up. And also, if you don't have the 30, uh, this is the most current book, you know, the 3039 book, go out there and uh, delve into it. So, what we'll do is put a bookmark right here, showing that's where we left off. Oh, that's my 15 mil army list. Things I want to do. All right. So, Things that if you're really into looking into the history of stuff too, look on eBay. You can find these things pretty cheap probably for under $10, $15 most likely. And you'll have these books out there too. And anything that gives you ideas on how to run campaigns. So I, that's something to look into while the uh, before I get into the next campaign uh Video, so let's just think about making this into a series possibly. And I know I got at least two, three more videos to do that probably at least a half an hour long or more because this is just doing an overview for most of this video and where to look for your source stuff. And well, there's also the strategic operations book, too, that's part of the series of books from Catalyst and that might be something you want to look into also all right this is hulk Rex. you guys have a good one talk to you later